This road stretched out front in front of me, but I'm two steps back from where I wanna be. Swear the cops got a gun on me. Maybe I'm someone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Taylor and I am a second year MPH student at Columbia and today I have some very, very special guests with me. Hi everyone, I'm Michael. I'm also a second year um, MPH candidate, um, also in the health policy and management department. Hi, I'm Brenna. I am a first year MPH student in sociomedical sciences. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm also a first year MPH student in the epidemiology department. The first question, why an MPH and what do you plan to do with it? I initially thought I wanted to go to medical school and as I was kind of going through that process, I realized that I was actually more interested in like a population level approach as opposed to like the individual diagnostic process that medicine gives you. So I decided to go the MPH route. And I guess what I kind of want to do with it is to go into some sort of like social policy and advocacy, um, specifically around uh, sexual health and sexual rights. And I think a lot of um, public health students were at one point pre-med. So many. Yeah. So, so many. And uh, there's a lot of doctors as well who are in this program. Yeah, that's true too. And then there's people like Michael. Yeah, so for me, I um, my goal is to go to dental school. So um, always has been and kind of similar to what Brenna said, but um, for me, I kind of wanted to know how to help people with their oral health without actually like doing the treatments. So from the policy level and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, so I took some public health classes in undergrad. I started pre-med and then hated organic chemistry. So I was like, let's see what else I can do. Um, really love the public health classes I took um, and was really interested by like infectious disease research. Um, so that was initially why I wanted to get my MPH was so that I could go do infectious disease and outbreak research, um, which would have come in real handy right now. <laughs> um, but now that I've started the program, um, I'm not really sure what like job title I want right now, but I'm really interested in the health of incarcerated populations and health disparities and racial health disparities. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that yet. Maybe law school. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a plethora of things I could do with my MPH, so I'm not worried about finding something to fit my interests. And for me also pursuing an MPH, um, I think really separated me from the application pool um, for dental school or even medical school too. Um, and also for if I didn't get into dental school, then I would have that backup plan that would still allow me to you know, improve the oral health of the population without actually having to treat. So it, it gives you a lot of opportunities too. So I guess we can explain kind of the certificate like department thing. So I, I always explain it is like your department is like your major and then your certificate's like your your minor or whatever. Yeah so I when I was applying to um, public health programs, I was looking at schools that had either like a social or a behavioral health department, just because I knew I was really interested in like the um, social determinants of health. Um, and so then when looking towards my certificate, I really wanted to like get into like more subtopics that I was like interested in. So I ended up choosing um, sexuality, sexual and reproductive health. Um, but I actually went back and forth on like what I wanted to do just because a lot of people, especially at Mailman, talk about how sociomedical sciences is a very theory-based um, department in and of itself, as opposed to something like epidemiology or biostats or HPM, where it's very um, practice heavy. And so I was worried about having a theory-based department and a theory-based um, certificate. But you, there's also like a lot of flexibility within departments and certificates where you can still take classes um, that interest you. So I've taken more 
um, theory-based classes outside of my certificate, still within my department, and also I'm taking more like practical-based um, classes within my certificate where I'm still learning how to use like statistical software, even though it's not like an FE course. Why Mailman over other schools? Yeah, so I think I am kind of in the minority. I applied to public health school on like a very last minute kind of whim. I only applied to two programs. Um, and the reason I wanted to come to Columbia in all honesty was that I was kind of looking for an excuse to move to Manhattan um, and having like knowing that I'd be taught by like world-class faculty and like leaders in their field um, especially like the sociomedical um, sciences department is not something that exists at many schools so the opportunities here were just like too big to pass up. For me um, like I said, I've been pre-dental forever, um, and during my undergrad, I participated in a summer program at Columbia for pre-medical and pre-dental students, and I fell in love with Columbia, I fell in love with the city, you know, also New York City has tons of opportunities. I'm from Colorado, and I felt going to New York would help me uh, better be able to network and make those connections. Um, so for me, I had a pretty difficult time deciding um, which school. I think I applied to six public health programs. Um, and I remember the deadline to decide was like April 15th and I was still visiting schools like April 13th um, just because I was like really paranoid about choosing the wrong place. Um, but towards the end, I was really only between Columbia and another program, and I had come to Columbia's Admitted Student Day, and they um, had a guest lecture by one of our professors, Dr. Fulalove, um, which I just found super interesting. I think I have, like, a very, very similar, like, kind of, like, story and thought process as you do, Kaylee. Um, like I applied to a similar number of schools and I was like agonizing over the decision up until the very last minute and I I like didn't get to go to admitted students day but I think I just kind of like looked through faculty and like um, kind of like when people ask me like why like one program over the other I always just say like just read through like the classes that they offer and the faculty they have and like when you're reading about something and you can't stop because like oh this is just so exciting sounding to me like I feel like that's the place you should go. Yeah I think it becomes like 75% a personal decision honestly because and like if you get your MPH like it's a graduate level degree no matter where you get it from you're still going to be like ahead in your field and able to get a job. And like with Columbia, like it having that name and like the networking capabilities that come with it is definitely a plus. Um, but for me, especially like I so much of my decision was based on like, am I going to be happy living here for two years or like, do I want to live here for two years? Like aside from like the academics and rankings and all that. Just like a side note. Columbia does have all these rankings and better networking capabilities and all that but I think if you still get into Columbia that doesn't automatically mean people are going to hire you it's what you need to go there and allow yourself to network just because you're there people aren't going to come to you to network you have to put in that effort to go out and make those connections and that is one of my regrets throughout this whole program during my first year, um, when you're in the core, when everybody takes all the same classes, you get introduced to all these different types of people that you otherwise would not have reached out to. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't take advantage of that until my second year. So um, just cause it's, you know, a school with a big name um, doesn't mean you automatically get all these things handed to you. I would say you still need to put in just as much work to be able to utilize these advantages. I think that's a really good point. It actually kind of brings me to like another um, 
thing that I wanted to ask you guys, which is, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't call them lows. Maybe we can call them challenges or hurdles. <laughs> For me, as soon as I got to mailman, even at admitted students day, my biggest challenge was that imposter syndrome. Mm. I felt like everyone around me was so much smarter, better at everything, had all this experience in public health already. I remember going to admitted students day and you know, people behind me and introducing themselves and doing all this, making their job seem like they have some super fancy job, which I'm sure they did, but I didn't have that. I was working as a dental assistant before that. And I just, I, I was shocked and I thought, oh my gosh, did mailmen accidentally admit me <laughs> or do I belong here? Am I going to end up dropping out? I was so scared, but, um, you know, actually coming here, the school actually does want you to succeed and they do everything they can to help you with that. Um, for me, the first semester was just overwhelming um, with so much change and like whether you're straight out of undergrad like I was or you've worked for X number of years, like grad school just felt different for me and wasn't really what I was expecting. Um, you know, you're still in classes and have assignments, but it feels a little more, there's more at stake, I guess, is what it felt like. And like you applied to grad school, like for a reason, like you want to further your education and career. And like that kind of comes with a different feeling towards school, um, if that makes any sense. Um, and that was just kind of unexpected for me. Um, but specifically like being in the core, um, which some of you guys have touched on, like any second year student, like you'll no doubt hear like the core is the worst and was so bad. And like for me, and I know for some of my friends, like it's never the information you're learning in the core that's hard or like it's you like it's never that you have so many assignments, like you can't do anything else or it's so hard. It's just like the, like assignments you do are just kind of so benign and like straightforward and they don't require a lot of brain power but there's many of them every week and you just get like mentally exhausted from doing the same thing for 16 weeks straight um and I think that kind of like war on me emotionally as well like when I stopped being mentally stimulated I started kind of like looking around and questioning a lot of like social factors and like what am I doing here and like I should be learning different stuff than this um but then the core is over and everything's fine <laughs> um so like it it's just frustrating having like knowing you have to do assignments that aren't necessarily furthering your knowledge but you just have to do them for the sake of like the assignments do the professors expecting it I just need to do it I think that's a much better way of like saying <laughs> the emotions that I was feeling <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it definitely is just like you have to play the game I think I told myself that like every morning I'm like just to get through the core and the schedule is kind of wild in the core too you have very little autonomy over like what your day looks like yeah, and I think too, like something that was frustrating for me was like, especially in um, like more of like the determinants classes and like global and stuff like that. Like I wanted, like I was interested in what we were supposed to be learning like, on the screen and like in the reading, but didn't really have enough time to actually like learn it or process it or like dive into it if I was interested in a certain thing because like there were all these sort of like tedious assignments that needed to get done and like even if there weren't like you're still like Kaylee said just like mentally exhausted like and you don't want to do anything else. <laughs> Final thoughts on anything that you I know this is a really big question but anything you wish you had known before you started your MPH? I think maybe like knowing that I didn't have to put myself in a box and like say these are my interests this is what I want to learn and just like being really open to like what 
I would like the opportunities are available. Um, and like, I still don't even really know what I want to do after leaving Mailman. And so I think I came in with all of these notions that I like, since I didn't have a plan that like, it wasn't going to be a successful time and that you know, I was feeling like an imposter, like I didn't have enough experience um, to be like qualified to be joining in on these conversations. But, like, that's definitely not the reality of it. At least not in my experience. I still don't know. <laughs> I think that as I've like kind of been sitting here thinking, and there's like, I'm sure there's a lot of things if I really sat down and thought about it, like a lot of things that I wish I had known. But just sitting here thinking about it, I think that right now I would say that like if I could go back and tell myself something, it would just be you are going to regret like not like immersing yourself in the things that you're interested in as they come along more than you'll regret like missing a couple points on a quant homework. Um, <laughs> and I think that it's just like, not that, I mean, not, I'm sure, you know, two years ago me wouldn't have listened, but like <laughs> trying to like impart the like idea that it's okay if things don't go exactly the way you thought they would. It's okay if things don't go to plan. It's okay if like whatever you thought you were doing after this, you're either not doing anymore or you're taking longer to do or like anything with that or like you don't get the perfect practicum you thought you wanted and like all that kind of stuff. I'm sure I'm, I, as I say that, like I still think that that like there's some, somewhere inside of me like there's still like the person that was in the court that's still not okay, even still with the words coming out of my mouth, even knowing now that like it was all okay. And like, I got a practicum and I liked the people I worked with and like, I've done cool research that I've enjoyed and like all that kind of stuff. And I'm still like, yeah, but it didn't go exactly to plan. And like, I think that's just kind of what like partly like, at least for me, like eats you up inside. And, like, I wish I could, like, have taken some of that stress away from myself. But that's kind I of feel that exact same way. Um, I came in to Mailman, you know, on this certain path in mind. Um, and before I came here, I thought everyone, you know, had their set plan, knew what they wanted to do. And so I told myself, oh, well, this is what I'm going to do then. And then... I got here, realized a lot of people, they, they're, they don't. And so, um, I don't know. I think, yeah, me knowing what I want to do in a way similar to what Taylor was saying, kind of like made me have that mindset of wanting things to go exactly the way that I planned and it not going exactly the way that I planned that would stress me out and you know, contribute to more stress throughout my time there because of that. So, yeah, I would say just expect, expect the unexpected. Is that <laughs> what they say? It wasn't, you know, cute, like very different than what I was expecting, but um, yeah, um, just grad school is, or mail, being at Mailman at least, is what you make of it. But if you get too caught up in that, I think it, it just makes things a little more stressful. I want to say thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to me tonight. No, yeah, seriously, though, guys, thanks so much for um, giving different voices. I like it when it's not just me talking all the time, as um, surprising as that may be. <laughs> <laughs>